Welcome to the Jose Aliaga Show. Today I have a, a great guest, a good friend of mine. His name is Mad Marco, who is the president of NORC, North American Republican Club. How are you doing, my friend? Good to be back, Jose. <laughs> well, a lot of people was asking for you, too. And this is, hey, you should bring your friend Matt Marco again. And uh, people really like the previous interview. By the way, for the people who didn't see it, you can go on YouTube online and you can put Matt Marco on work and you're going to see the last interview. But now we are here today. We're back. <laughs> it's good to be back. Yes, yes. Matt, we have a lot of topics, a lot of going on in America. And uh, I want to start with this interesting question. But what do you think overall about the uh, democratic uh, debate? Well, the Democrat debate was, I think, very <laughs> revealing, actually. It really um, revealed a lot of things like socialism and the things that they're trying to do that uh, is very different, mm -hmm. very distinctly different from the Republican side. I remember decades ago, people used to say, oh, there's no difference between Democrats and Republicans. Mm -hmm. Now there is such a clear difference in a divide, and it's, it's very clear. And... Um, after the debate, the Wall Street Journal said that uh, Bernie Sanders won. Not that he won the debate itself, mm -hmm. but that uh, four years earlier, mm -hmm. he was way out there in left field, different from all the others in the group as the socialist Democrat. Mm -hmm. Now he hasn't changed, but all the others have now changed, and they are all socialists. So they've all swung in his direction, and that's why the Wall Street Journal called him the winner. <laughs> Wow, it's interesting because I was two weeks ago, I was in Peru, and Peru is look at Venezuela, which is where the socialist has been maximized by having a successful socialist, meaning that people are leaving the country, it's a lot of poverty, yep. no job creation at all, it's people losing their jobs and all that. But now we're talking about a debate when they actually they embrace socialism, then That's it's right. failing in other parts of the world. Very interesting. And an interesting thing just happened in Greece, uh -huh. what where they uh, elected a conservative government. Okay. And it's very interesting because Greece had embraced socialism, the type that these Democrat candidates are espousing, mm -hmm. and basically ran themselves into, into bankruptcy. They had to be bailed out by the European Union, very controversial. And now they're trying to uh, reform themselves and bring in the conservatives. So the, it's a, another case study of why the socialism, big government spending and all this craziness doesn't work and you gotta have these conservative, uh, fiscal conservative uh, ways of running your, your country in order to survive. And it scares me because if you look at the way the United States is running right now mm -hmm. with our debt, that uh, our debt to GDP ratio isn't far different from where Greece is. So mm -hmm. the difference is that uh, Greece had themselves bailed out by the European Union. Uh, we have to bail ourselves out. So um, we got to go the opposite way that these Democrats were talking about with a <laughs> massive spending programs, and a lot of which is spending that wouldn't even be in this country. Um, in fact, one thing I wanted to ask you about, Jose, there were okay. few of the Democrat candidates were talking uh -huh. about the migration coming up from Latin America into the United States. Okay. And they actually use the term Marshall Plan for Latin America. Mm -hmm. And as you may know, the Marshall Plan was what we did after World War II to rebuild Europe. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, probably hundreds of billions of dollars that we lent over there that would completely rebuilt the bombed out Europe. Mm -hmm. And they referenced that as something we should be doing in Latin America. So I'd like to ask you, well, what is going on? Why are so many of these Latin Americans coming up to the United States? Well, and would that help? Well, the, f the thing that happened in Latin America is that they have too much corruption. People that get elected, they like to speak like socialists, free this, free that, but end up, end up the results end up really negative for them. They, the countries in Latin America are really rich and they have a lot of resources, but the heads are people that don't know how to make a decision or try to play around with socialists and creating more poverty. So my opinion is, if they elect the right people with the right philosophy, real true conservatives down there, they know how to manage things well, it will create more wealth because they already have the wealth, but they need to work in how to create a friendly environment for business people so the private sector invests more and give more opportunities to the people. 
So by doing that, it will grow and great. I don't think so Latin America need to knock doors asking for help. They can help themselves by electing the right people. And uh, now we have so many problems that we need to take care of domestic problems. And I think, and I don't think so the Democrat courses, the right course try to to do that because what they really try to do is try to gain some votes by lying and saying things that are not true and doesn't make sense. We need to put our money here in America and be able to work. And I think the course for Donald Trump is doing is, is the right thing, cutting taxes, creating friendly environment for business people, mm -hmm. but America first. Yes, and, and that is really the distinct differences between mm -hmm. Trump's America first mm -hmm. policy mm -hmm. and the Democrats wanting the open borders, wanting to do a Marshall Plan <laughs> in Latin America, who knows what that would cause, and no, at all, no reference at all to our national debt. How are we going to pay for that? Basically, we're going to borrow the money and go to debt and send that down to Latin America. And from what you're saying, mm -hmm. they don't have the, uh, the government down there in Latin America that could even not even handle that without corruption. It would all basically just be a, a complete waste. But tell me, why are mm -hmm. these people migrating up to the United States as they are? Well, I mean, that's kind of interesting. Um, the thing it is that it's interesting in some countries when you go and tell them, do you like, how many people don't like United States? And a lot of people raise their hands. And how many people wants to go and work in the United States? The same people will raise their hand too and say, they don't want to work. So it's going to be very kind of interesting. But they always hear about the, about the American dream, the land of opportunity, the land of the free, when you can work poor, but you can work hard, play by the rules, and you can reach your dreams, you can reach success. That is what America is about, and we need to protect that. And there are countries where they apply socialism. It's not like that. It's, it's totally different. It's very difficult. If you work poor, you remain poor, you stay poor and die poor. Even if you work hard, it's really difficult to go up. It's because it's not the conditions. Even though those countries have a lot of wealth, uh, natural resources, minerals, they have everything. But they know the, the way how they born and construct their things are not like in America, giving incentive, giving the opportunities to go up. They don't have that. So it's very difficult. So they're looking for better opportunities. They hear about the American dream, and that's why they want to come here. But it's very, uh, a lot of people are very informal. They don't know that they need to go and apply for a visa a work visa, a student visa, so many things that they can come legally. Some people just hear, oh, to go to the United States, just cross the border. There's no, no the way to do. I mean, mm -hmm. the way to, to go. But it's a lot of people need to research and get more information and things like that as well. But do you think somebody is encouraging them to all of a sudden migrate without going through the process, without going to the embassies in their country? I think so. I'm and quite so frankly, I think so. I just wonder, is there some kind of a conspiracy? Is there? A, a group that's trying to encourage this. Probably, probably because uh, at, at this point that nothing surprised me. Nothing surprised mm -hmm. me anymore. It's a lot of, uh, they call it ONG, ONGs, that kind of similar to foundations. They get money from different sources that we don't sure. know where the money come from. And that plays out where help activists to move a groups of people and influence to people to do something. And that happened in Peru, in South America, and it's sad. It's very sad. And, you know, it's interesting because we have a crisis at our border, which mm -hmm. the Democrats have denied mm -hmm. until just recently. And now all of a sudden they go down to the border and they see the holding facilities and they're all up in arms, like AOC was mm -hmm. all up in arms about this, mm -hmm. yet voted against the additional funding that would give them the resources to <laughs> have a more humane uh, area for them to be in and better resources. So it's as if they want to have a bad situation there as a photo op for themselves. Well, you see, it's not country with open borders, you know. For example, I'll give you a recent example in South America. Venezuela, a lot of people are immigrating, leaving Venezuela because of opportunities. Even though, I mean, the socialists, is, it's a free water, free gas, free electricity, but you get water for two days a week, electricity, or gas mm -hmm. maybe three days a week, I mean, it's not really free and it's, you don't get it anyways. So these people leave to Peru. Peru says, hey, we want to be nice. Let's allow them to come. So every Venezuelan can come. Uh, months later, you got high crime. A lot of uh, banks are getting a uh, rope, uh, people coming with guns and shooting people and uh, foreign people. We have 
crimes have been raising so much, then the Peruvian says, we want to now require visa like United States. We cannot leave open borders anymore because we want to know who are those people and we want good people to come to help our country, help our economy. We don't want people coming and commit more crime. And they actually close the borders run away. So it didn't work for Peru. So Why do United if, States want to open the borders now? But what would happen if somebody snuck into Peru oh. without, without following their laws? Oh, of course, they get arrested and deported. Arrested and deported, there would be right. no hearing, no judge to no. wait for it? It's nothing, it's nothing like, uh, it's nothing like, um, like, uh, it's nothing like, uh, you know, oh, you're it's a racist. Oh, no, that's, you're racist because you're taking somebody. Nothing like that. It's nothing to do with racism. It's right. about a crime. It's some people that uh, you're breaking the law. And, and that is about what and, is about. Yeah. And another thing that we've found is uh, there's a correlation between a lot of diseases that are coming into our country, uh, measles, mumps, things, people that are not vaccinated coming in from these that are migrating in and then sent uh, free in the United States supposedly to wait for their hearing. And there's no quarantine period. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's interesting how we're very flexible right now on legislation that's been put in strong laws, how it's very flexible to get people like that and we have to actually spend more money because usually, you know, we spend some money to take care of these people, you right. know? And it's sad, I mean, I see cases when people come in and they're, they're starting having more kids and apply for benefits. And, you know, if you go to Mexico or another country and then you have kids there and then you knock the door and tell the government, now give me free things, give me this, give me that, you don't get nothing. You don't get absolutely nothing. But in America, I mean, we're getting and people are abusing more and more and more. So that's why these asylum seekers will go through Mexico. They won't stop there <laughs> where they'll be safe. Mm -hmm. They keep going to where they can get the better benefits in the United mm -hmm. States. That's why they don't stay in Mexico. Is well, and where the money come from? Exactly. Yeah, you We're see, borrowing it. <laughs> so that, that's another problem. You know, it's many people that are working hard to be able to pay their bills and all that. And we have in this group of immigrants, and you see, the American dream, it wasn't about that. People used to be come here because they want to work, they want to have the freedom, right. and be able to reach success. A lot of people didn't come for food stamps or free things. They come to, uh, to go up, exactly. you know? And it's really sad then, uh, the Democrats are incentive, this kind of things that, hey, come yeah. here and you get this for free, I mean. That's right. And that's sad. But I just want to, before I, um, I forgot. I want to know who is your, who do you think because you know more about this. The than Democrats me. running, right? Yeah, who's gonna win about that? Who's gonna know win the whole election? I talk about the primary. The yeah, that's a, that is a, t a tough one. Um, well, you look at the the leaders right now. Obviously, yeah. uh, Joe Biden is Joe leader, Biden. but they seem to have turned on him a little bit. The media has because he's made some gaffes. It was very <laughs> interesting um, how uh, Harris tried to paint him as, we'll call him a racist or something, because uh -huh. Biden had recently said that he had worked with these segregationists in the Senate uh -huh. to get things done, uh -huh. as if he was saying, oh, I can work for these people. And I would like to say they were Democrats, uh -huh. by the way. It's not like he was reaching across <laughs> the aisle. He's segregationists. But uh, Harris called him out on that. But the interesting thing about Camilla Harris is that she's trying to paint herself as somebody who was uh, being uh, as like victimized by this, but the reality is she comes from a privileged background. Um, oh, come half, half Jamaican, I think, and the other half uh, Indian. Oh, really? From India, but uh, she's painting herself as an African American who is part of this whole, mm -hmm. as if she was part of the whole busing thing when she seems kind of young for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're all trying to, I would say in general, that debate, mm -hmm. which I watched both of them, mm -hmm. They, these, a lot of the Democrats seem very desperate. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, when I say desperate, I mean just trying to get attention. They were speaking over each other. Uh, it wasn't well moderated. The moderators just let them uh, mm -hmm. go at each other like that. And it was, uh, there were some of them, like Kristen uh, Gildebrand was uh, trying to dominate the mic time by speaking over and got away with it. Actually was rewarded for it several times. But it was hard to listen to because uh, they were all speaking at the same time. But it basically is who could give away the most stuff. You've got uh, this one gentleman of uh, Asian descent, can't think of his name right now, who wants to give 
Every American, a thousand dollars a month. Really? Oh, that was J something. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. And uh, anyway, it's a thousand dollars a month. And then, of course, other giveaways that they're trying to buy votes with is uh, free college, for example, free uh -huh. you know tuition. They don't stop and think we already offer free college and tuition. And it's called the GI Bill. Mm -hmm. You want free college and tuition paid for by the U.S. government, then, then enlist in the military, All right. and you'll get it. Now, on the flip side, if the government were just going to give you free college and tuition, that would totally mm -hmm. destroy our all-volunteer military, mm -hmm. because that is probably the number one reason why people enlist, is to get mm -hmm. that free college. Mm -hmm. Give it to everyone anyway, then why would they want to enlist? So then you'd have to go to a, a draft again, which is very unpopular mm -hmm. and very unfair. Mm -hmm. And it's not something we want to do, and it's even more expensive. I see. So. No, you, you're right, you're right. So you think Biden probably have more possibilities? He's a former vice president, he has some experience for eight years working with uh, President Obama. But um, do you think being 76, I think he's 76, is, you see when Ronald Reagan was running for uh, election, people said that his age was kind of concerned, right. then John McCain was kind of concerned, but he's already 76, right. a lot more older than McCain and Reagan. He'll be going in older than Reagan was when he came out. Right. And uh, actually, a lot of them tried to uh, bring that up during this debate by basically, mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to remember which one said it, pass uh, the torch, like Biden came and spoke when he was a little boy, heard him say that it's time for one generation to pass the torch to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And Biden said, I'm hanging on to that torch. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an issue. And also Biden did sound like the, uh, his age was having an effect on his thinking. Mm -hmm. He was uh, stumbling a lot. And plus, he's got a lot of skeletons in his closet. I know. You know he was accepting bribes for his family while he was vice president. Oh. Um, his son was uh, actually flying on Air Force Two. They went to the Ukraine. They went to China, both places. He mm -hmm. got uh, huge contracts for his son's business. Uh, this seems very unethical. Mm -hmm. And these are the types of skeletons in the closet that if he were the nominee, would come out and bite him. And I'm sure that the other, at least the, the <laughs> DNC should be aware of that. Um, I'd say the most articulate other group mm -hmm. would be uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, uh, mm -hmm. the mayor of South Bend. Okay. Um, and he's the opposite as far as the youngest in the group. I think he's 37 years old. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, very articulate. But then he's run into some problems too. As the mayor, there was a police shooting. Mm -hmm in uh, South Bend, Indiana, where uh, uh, a black man was shot by a policeman and this caused the racial tension. And oh. you can't just be an absentee mayor off uh, <laughs> traveling around the country right. running for president and who's running the, the city? And there's a lot of hard feelings. Uh, I don't think the people of South Bend are very happy about that. I see. What about Kamala Harris? You mentioned her before. She's us. I think current senator from California. Yeah, Kamala Harris, um, she is, uh, I would say, a, a good speaker, has mm -hmm. a good stage presence mm -hmm. and all that. Very, of course, liberal, t uh, typical. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she's for the reparations. She's for the free college. She's for a lot of these <laughs> freebies. Mm -hmm. Will she have traction? I think that probably most people would say that she came off probably mm -hmm. the best in that debate. Oh, okay. Because, uh, you know, she called out Biden. She sort of wrestled her way up to the f more microphone time. Mm -hmm. And when there were uh, 20 people or 10 on each uh, night mm -hmm. fighting for microphone time, you know, there's not much time. They got to fight for it. And she was very aggressive like mm -hmm. that. So I would oh. say that, uh, you know, sh there's a good chance she'll be in the top tier of. Uh, oh. Of those, okay. so uh, and the question is, mm -hmm. who's going to drop out before the next debate in Detroit at the end of this month? I don't know. We'll have to get back together and discuss that yeah, debate. Yeah, absolutely. But what about Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders, I would say, again, has sort of led the whole pack as far as the platform uh, of the socialism and all mm -hmm. that. But I just don't see him as mm -hmm. uh, being their nominee. Um, you know, he's got a problem. He was always railing against the millionaires. and the, Now he's a millionaire. <laughs> I, I don't know where he got it all from. He's claiming book deals, but I'm thinking mm -hmm. that he might have uh, 
gotten well reimbursed for dropping out of the last election when he did and endorsing Hillary's, Hillary Clinton. So he may have sold out, became a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Now he's thinking, I'm going to go back to the well again. Mm -hmm. But uh, there again, I think he's, he's, he seems kind of tired. Mm -hmm. And he seems angry. And everybody, and that's another distinction between these Democrats. They're, they're, all of them in this debate made it sound like mm -hmm. Obama was still president, and mm -hmm. the unemployment rate was still high, and there's all this uh, poverty and stuff, and they kept making references to personal reference to people in poverty and the, mm -hmm. having to work all these jobs and can't find jobs. And the reality is that's over now. That was mm -hmm. an Obama time. Now that Trump's in there, it's, this is not a, uh, is happening, but they were trying to make it sound like nothing has changed with President Trump. The reality is mm -hmm. it's all different now, so it's a tough thing for them to have to debate when the, when the policies that President Trump has been doing, which has worked so well, of cutting taxes to make the United States more competitive against the other countries, cutting regulations to make it uh, mm -hmm. easier for corporations to grow, it's all working. People are working. And um, what the Democrats were talking about doesn't exist anymore. It did, and mm -hmm. it was changed because of President Trump. But they want to repeal, some of them said they want to repeal the tax cuts and everything. They want to go back to that time. <laughs> So. But it's interesting. For what you're saying, for what I get him, this election is kind of between uh, Biden and Bernie Sanders, you think? Oh, I would definitely not dis discount uh, Harris, Harris and Buttigieg. Okay. But you see, Biden is 76 and uh, Bernie Sanders is 77 years old. So, I mean, Bernie, you think he has the same kind of problem, this kind of, you know? I don't, I don't think. Bernie has a chance, but uh -huh. he has been effective in steering the party's <laughs> direction towards socialism, okay. and they've adopted it. And it's it's okay. amazing that they would. So uh, they've made a, a, a strong distinction mm -hmm. between themselves and the Republican, the conservative uh, fiscal conservative policies. And I think that uh, it's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of fun, whoever they pick, mm -hmm. to see how uh, they go up against President Trump in the debates. What about Cory Booker? Do you think he has some chance? He does. He, uh, he didn't seem to come off very well in the debate, from okay. what I saw. Uh, I've seen him come off better before on television, different things. He has to uh, do more to distinguish himself. But I do think yeah, he could uh, definitely he could. be in that uh, mm -hmm. higher tier, mm -hmm. possibly so. Okay, so for the names that we name, you think the winner maybe come from those names? It's from hard. the primary, it's for the primary. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to say who their nominee is gonna be because there's so much time between now and then, mm -hmm. and there's, uh, I'm sure, a lot of skeletons that'll be dragged out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so many different things can happen. Uh, we never thought uh, Jimmy Carter would ever be president. You know, there's, right. There's a lot of things, but I, I think that uh, Biden looks like he's got the crosshairs on him right now, <laughs> and he's got a lot of skeletons in his closet. <laughs> so out of all those names that we hear today, I mean, which one do you think will have a chance to, to win the election, the general election on 2020? Uh, President Trump has the best chance of winning the general election. <laughs> okay. But I don't think any of those Democrats can stand a chance. So those guys won't have any chance. And, and we're seeing a lot of fake news about the polling because okay. as you're, you're hearing how in the fake news how any one of those candidates that they pick would beat President Trump. <laughs> and we don't, we've don't. heard this no, before. Yeah, we hear this before. And yeah. I can't believe, it's sort of like believing the weatherman every day. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> After he predicted sunshine and it rained, you think, all right, he's predicting sunshine tomorrow, I believe it. You know, I'm not bringing my umbrella. <laughs> These people are believing the same lines over and over again. Yeah. But yet, <laughs> but yet, if you look at the Trump rallies, once again, just like 2016, yeah. people are showing up by the tens of thousands. It's true. It's and true. you do not see that kind of excitement for the Democrats. <laughs> it's true. That's absolutely what, true. What have you heard? And what do they think in uh, Peru about uh, our race? Do they care? Are they following it? Well, um, I think what happened with Peru is in the beginning, some, uh, a lot of Peruvians believed the fake news. And so they started dealing with illegal immigration, with or the effects of immigrants coming in and commit so many crimes. And now they say, so Trump was right. Oh, he's not racist. He's right. He actually wants to uh, protect our country. I mean, the ideas, they started saying that 
relating with what Trump policy is about immigration. And actually the current president is copy some of the policies because they don't want to come they don't want to allow to just come any, anybody. They want to make sure that good people with good uh, with integrity and people then coming to help our economy and help the country. Not so people. they like President Trump. Right. It has been changing, yeah, because the fake news, CNN and those ABC that goes around the world, has some effect because some people, they believe it in, in South America. But now it has been changed after see the economy in the United States is doing well. The job creation as well, the stock market is really well, and so they, they see the results, you know. Exactly, so I that, think how, they're getting better information from their media than we are. <laughs> right, well, yeah, we have a lot of Peruvians that live here and say, hey, you know, Trump is doing this, Trump is doing that, and that, uh, that's a good indicator right now. You know, another very interesting thing happened. Mm -hmm. In the Persian Gulf, okay. Iran attacked a couple of the oil tankers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, had this happened many years ago, the price of oil worldwide would have gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. And it shows the difference now that the United States is the biggest oil producer in the world, mm -hmm. that it hardly affected the, the price of oil very much. And it, it just shows the difference with the, mm -hmm. with the policies to make us that biggest oil producer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Iran, to their chagrin, are realizing mm -hmm. that um, they can't hold us hostage to the oil market by threatening passage, mm -hmm. safe passage of oil tankers in the Persian Gulf again. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that is also another indication of the success of the Trump administration. That is true, that is true. And people can see that, I mean, you know, it's right. a big difference before and after Donald Trump. And he's a businessman, he understands how, how, what it takes to be able to fix a budget, to be able to have plus, where when we have uh, in the past the uh, Obama administration, things were different and I can see the contrast and the positive results. Uh, that's, uh, that's very important for our country. Right. So, yeah. No, it's a good point. I didn't think about the, the, the Gulf, the Persian Gulf. That's true. Well, um, Matt, and tell me kind of locally, John James is going to be running 2020 the yes. Senate election. What do you think about, do you think he have a chance? I think he has a chance. Definitely uh, he's getting the support already from the, the, the National Party for that. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, when he ran against Stabenow, it was a good uh, dress rehearsal for him. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't think that uh, the incumbent in there right now has uh, much traction. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say yes, he has a chance. The question is, what kind of coattails is President Trump going to have in mm -hmm. the 2020 election? Mm -hmm. Now, also in 2018, mm -hmm. last year's election, you had uh, Proposal 1, as we talked before, mm -hmm. which brought out a lot of Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, I do see that there are some things, hopefully won't happen. There's a couple of citizen-initiated uh, petitions flying around right now. Um, mostly related to abortion issues. One's a heartbeat bill, the other one's a dismemberment bill. Unfortunately, these are the type of things that could bring out the Democrats again. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll des definitely do us a disservice if these things continue on. Mm -hmm. But um, if, there is, if those don't succeed, if uh, there's not a big outpouring of Democrats, because I don't see the Democrats getting very energized by the, the current crop of candidates they have, and if, if any there's no local stupid things that bring mm -hmm. them out. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, President Trump should do well and his coattails could, coattails could definitely help John James in the process. I see, I see. No, it's true, it's true. And what do you think about the local races like um, the state, I mean the U.S. House. We lost my bishop seat, we lost Dave Traw seat, right. Lena Einstein was the candidate at the time. And Oakland County has been losing seats. I mean, we lost the two U.S. representative seats. Do you think that we will take it back those seats on 2020? You know, that's hard to say right now because I don't know who would be running mm -hmm. for those seats. It's very hard to take out okay. an incumbent. I've uh, asked about some of those who ran for those seats mm -hmm. when they were open in the mm -hmm. last election. Mm -hmm. And I've not heard of any one of them really uh, coming forward to want to do that again. Actually, I've mm -hmm. asked a few of them already. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh. I think they have uh, felt the sting of, uh, of defeat. And it's, it's so hard to take out a, an, 
an incumbent. And plus, uh, the Democrats poured a lot of money mm -hmm. to win those seats. The right. question is, are they going to be able to raise that kind of money again to hold those seats? Mm -hmm. So um, we'll have to revisit this once we find out who's throwing their hats in the ring and who's willing to do it. Well, you know, actually, John Akuri has been a, a start an exploratory community for, right. uh, for the, I think, for the 11th. Okay, is that the eleventh? No, or was it the eighth? The eleventh. Oh, it's the eleventh. Okay, yeah, the one good. that was a Yeah, I think he yeah. would be uh, a, a very, a very uh, strong mm -hmm. contender for that. I, mm -hmm. I hope he does it. I think mm -hmm. that he's got uh, experience in international, and uh, mm -hmm. and he's definitely, I think, would be a very strong. Hopefully, John Curry, mm -hmm. his uh, exploration <laughs> tells him to do it because uh, I would like to support him. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't know yet who is going to be running for the eight. You said right, the was Mike Bishop. Yeah, I don't know of any don't names, know. but you're right. John Curry is probably the only one I've heard of so far that has mm -hmm. uh, come out and and mm -hmm. thrown his uh, hat in the ring, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be interesting, but uh, it's going to be more shows, and we're going to talk about that hopefully. And and as far you know. as the Oakland County Executive. Oh yes. Um, the uh, the the present. Uh, mayor of um, Rochester Hills. Mm -hmm. S seems like he's thinking about it. Oh, okay. That's uh, uh, Mayor Barnett. Yeah. And he's the only one so far I've heard that um, might be running as a Republican for executive of Oakland County. Okay. And he's got an interesting background because he had to go up against these term limit laws in Rochester Hills and they wouldn't let him back on the ballot and he ran a write-in campaign. Mm -hmm and one, mm -hmm. and that is such a difficult thing to do. So it shows that uh, he's got some good organizational skills. Mm -hmm. And Rochester Hills is one of the uh, best run cities, I'd say, mm -hmm. in Michigan that mm -hmm. I'm aware of, and mm -hmm. maybe in the country. It's a very well run city. Yeah, he's really young, and he has a lot of experience. He, he has been done a really good job so for I, Rochester. So for that executive position, I would guess it could be him against mm -hmm. uh, Andy Meisner, mm -hmm. who's the current treasurer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know of any others at this point that would mm -hmm. be uh, entering that race for mm -hmm. Oakland County Executive. Oh, I see. Sheriff Bouchard, maybe? And I've asked about Bouchard, uh -huh. and everybody I've asked about said that he's not going to do it. Oh, okay. I think he likes being sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be the sheriff, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Brian Barnett, Andy Meisner, that's, that will be a really uh, good race. Yeah. But I hear also um, somebody, a county commissioner, Woodward, I think. <clears throat> Woodward is another one uh, that I've heard mm -hmm. um, that uh, could jump in. But uh, at this point, uh, I would say if I were to guess who would be mm -hmm. the, the front runners running against each other, it would be uh, Barnett and Weisner. I see. What about um, for local, local, uh, for county commissioner in Waterford? <laughs> <laughs> Oakland County Commissioner. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I have heard of some names, but uh, uh -huh. none that want to be revealed at this time. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting, very interesting. But we will find out very soon, you know. We're going to hear more about uh, elections probably even before November. How about you, Jose? Any announcements yet no, on no, anything? Uh, no thoughts? Or <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy being a trustee, helping people in Independence Township, Clarkson area. And, uh, and an activist, doing an things activist, like this to yes. help uh, inform people. Yes. And, and that's very, a very important role to, because there's so much <laughs> static and clutter <laughs> and uh, here's some thoughtful analysis like you're doing, you're providing thank quite you. a good public service. Thank you, thank you. You too, Any th anything? Nope, uh, right now over the summer months, uh, NORC, <laughs> Stays pretty quiet, but uh, we're looking forward in the fall to start uh, bringing forth public uh, meetings where people can uh, get close to what the issues are and what's going on. Well, good, good. And we have the website for North, right? For people I, that want to. We, we do have that website for North going up. There it is. Um, you can see that. And another, uh, probably even more immediate thing, is our Facebook page. Uh, you can uh, just search North Oakland Republican Club on Facebook. I've also taken the liberty and the risk of putting up my personal uh, email address there. Um, I figure that if somebody really uh, has some thoughts or feedback they want to give me, I'll, uh, I'll deal with that directly. So uh, uh, feel free to give me an email and, uh, and I'll respond. Hopefully my spam won't get it, my spam filter. <laughs> <laughs> I do check that from time to time. So. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. If you try to sell me something, it might go into another folder. So. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, okay, okay. But well, well, it's good to have you back. Too. I want to. I'd like to hear more about what's going on in Latin America, though, sometime from you. Yeah, so. we will. Maybe we do another episode and talk about Latin America because there's a lot of going on down there. But the good things is, like I said, in Chile went to the right, Argentina went to the right, Brazil went to the right, Colombia, and uh, El Salvador. And so they're, they're adapting more conservative thought. That's, that's yeah. and sort of like what happened in Greece. Right. So I think people are learning. The question is, why aren't mo more Americans learning this, uh, <laughs> this history yeah. lesson of what works and what doesn't work? <laughs> right, right. But, no, but, but you see, we won in 2016 against the fake news, against everything that was played out by the Democrats. And we, d we have been delivered the results, positive results. Right. Good economy, good stock market. People are really happy right now with what's going on in the economy, and that's very important. And I'm very faithful that we're going to win in 2020. But we don't want to be overconfident because of what no. happened in 2018. So we've got to be very careful. Yeah, We've no. got to uh, be energized and realize that there's a lot at stake. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that hurt the Democrats a lot in 2016 mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that they were believing the fake news and they thought, ah, I don't have to go and vote because we've already got this thing in the bag. <laughs> so I think it's good to continue to make them think that they're way ahead, they're beating us in the polls, and they can just stay home because it's going to happen. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Well, thank you so much, my friend. Always good, my friend. Thank Always you. enjoy thank talking you. politics Me too. with you. Me too. Thank you, Matt. Very good. And that was all for today. And Thank you so much, and uh, if you want more information, you can follow us on Facebook at the Jose Aliaga Show on Facebook, and also you can call me at 248-736-7163 if you want to be a guest and be interviewed on the show. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Bye-bye.